the right stuff. But there's another side to Cooper's lifetime in aviation, one that for years he would only discuss with close friends until now. It involves his personal encounters with UFOs. For him, it began in 1951 while flying in Europe for the U.S. Air Force. There, Cooper and other pilots witnessed an incident that has never been officially explained. A vast armada of UFOs flying in formation at extremely high altitudes. Recently, Yolanda Gaskin spoke with Gordon Cooper. In this exclusive interview, Colonel Cooper spoke for the first time on television about his encounters with UFOs. I read about this incident you had in 1951, and you said you saw literally hundreds of unidentifiable flying objects. Yes, they were flying quite high. How high, we couldn't tell because we couldn't get anywhere near their altitude. But they were either very large craft way up or smaller craft still well above what we could get to. For a day and a half, all of this happened. But then no one wanted to talk about it. Well, we sent a report forward on it, and, and the answer that finally came back months later was they were probably high-flying seed pods, which didn't sound very logical. There are always a lot of excuses. There's always um, the weather balloons. I've heard that one before. Oh, yeah. In yeah. 1951, you couldn't even get close to That's the right. things that were flying overhead. You or anyone else that was flying. They were faster, higher. Six years later, Cooper again encountered a UFO. This one definitely was not a weather balloon. While supervising flight testing in Edwards Air Force Base, his military camera crew actually filmed an unidentified saucer-shaped object landing near the site. As they were sitting there filming, a little saucer came from, uh, I say little saucer, it was a saucer, came flying over their heads, put down three little landing gear and landed right out on the dry lake bed. And they picked up their cameras and started over toward it, filming as they went. And when they got in fairly close to it, it lifted up, put the gear back in the wheel wells, tipped up, and took off at a great rate of speed. And so they brought the, came into my office and told me what had happened, and I sent them over to develop the film, and then had to go through the, all the proper regulations of reporting this. And, and we wound up having to send the film forward to Washington in the uh, base jet airplane. And, uh, I don't know whether anyone's ever seen it since. Now, the vehicle that you just described, how similar was it to the very first sighting that you had back in 1951? Quite similar. It was basically the same plan form vehicle. They were a double saucer, lenticular. But if you're going to be going in and out of atmospheres like Earth or other places might have, you certainly need a little more aerodynamic type of vehicle and the saucer has the capability of going through the air at tremendous rates of speed and handling the bow and trailing wave without making shock waves. So it can be very silent while traveling at big rates of speed through the atmosphere. But sightings of UFOs weren't limited to the military. Cooper has commercial airline colleagues who've also seen UFOs. He has a friend of mine who's a captain on a major airline. Uh, at night, was flying along, noticed this, suddenly a big glow came off his left wing and and he looked out and his big saucer was sitting right off their wing. And so he turned slightly toward and it moved away and turned back and it moved back in position and turned to his co-pilot and said, uh, do you see what I see? And he said, oh God, yeah, I do. And it trailed along with him for quite a period of time and tipped up and climbed very steeply away. It was on Jim McDivitt's Gemini 7 mission where they saw um, this glint of something metallic off in the distance. And he reported, and nobody had it listed on the ground, so he tried getting a picture of it, but the sun, unfortunately, was glinting off of it. So bright, all you got is just a glint. There was no detail on what it was, but never any, uh, any further sighting at all on it. Years later, Cooper approached the United Nations with a proposal for a committee that would explore the UFO phenomenon. All right, now tell me about the letter to the UN. Well, the letter to the UN was uh, in conjunction with a meeting that I had with uh, Kurt Waldheim and the Security Council of the UN to try to encourage the UN to establish a committee to start comparing notes and data and information and to really look into all of this from an unbiased, neutral point of view. 
Here's a quote from, from your letter. I believe that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting this planet from other planets and are obviously a little more advanced than we are here on Earth. And are you saying that's exactly why governments have been trying to keep this information private because of that obvious advancement? Very possibly, right.